back to the Godot report. Godot is receiving a $100,000 USD donation from the company OP Games. This donation comes with no strings attached, so the devs are free to use the funds however they see fit. So what will they use the funds for? Well, the devs have shared that they try to have at least six months worth of payroll in the bank for their current contractors to ensure a form of job security for them. And as of 2022, cash reserves were running low. So these funds will be used to sustain the current team. The devs have also shared that they are working on other funding options as well, so that they are able to hire even more people to work on Godot. Some users express concern with accepting money from NFT slash crypto companies as they didn't want Godot to head in an undesirable direction. The Godot team reassured the community by stating that Godot is committed to staying vendor neutral, meaning game developers are free to publish and monetize their games wherever and however they want. Speaking of donations, Reddit user Fater ran a poll on how many devs have donated to Godot before. Out of the 671 devs who responded, 84.5% say they have never donated to the project, and 15.5% have donated or currently donate. Many devs said they will donate once their own project makes money. If you would like to support the development of Godot, I will provide a link to their Patreon down in the description. After six months of development, Godot 3.4 has been released. While many of us eagerly await the Godot 4.0 overhaul, developers are still making games right now using Godot 3. And so, the devs have been optimizing version 3 with bug fixes, as well as backporting what features they can from the 4.0 branch. This update is compatible with Godot 3.3 projects and is a recommended upgrade. Some new features coming to Godot 3.4 include portal-based occlusion calling. To use it, you divide your level into a series of rooms and portals, and this will prevent the GPU from rendering any objects that are not in the same room as the player camera. This should provide a huge boost in performance. Another change coming to 3.4 is a new ACES fitted tone mapper. This should make lighting look more realistic in Godot. It's most noticeable in very bright lights, which now should look more white. Another cool change is a new ring emitter for 3D particles which can emit particles on a ring or hollow cylinder with configurable radii and height. If you've been following the channel, subscribe by the way, you'll know that Godot Physics is being improved and will replace Bullet as the default physics engine. And in the 3.4 update, there will be support for height map, sync to physics, and other various fixes to rigid bodies and kinematic bodies. User Jitspo has added properties to configure angle simplification, UV distance, and path interval using the path mode in CSG Polygon. These are just a few of the changes in the 3.4 update. If you would like to see the top 10 features being added to Godot 3.4, I will link that video in the description. And I will also link the full article there as well. This episode of the Godot Report is brought to you by LearnGodot.com. LearnGodot.com is releasing its first course, Learn Programming in the Godot Engine. In this course, you will learn the fundamentals of programming and game development using the Godot Engine. You don't need any programming experience to take this course. Everything will be taught as you go. For three days only, use coupon code LEARN20 to receive 20% off your first order. Godot's animation system is getting overhauled for the 4.0 update. So why did the animation system need an overhaul? One reason is that Godot's animations were simply not compatible with major industry software like Maya, and this was for several reasons. A game engine has different requirements than 3D animation software in terms of how animation data is stored. For one, a game engine requires the ability to attach and remove different meshes as this is what makes character customization or equipable items possible. Animation need to work across different character models, even if the models are slightly different shapes or sizes. And for cutscenes, animations can be so long and therefore so large that they need to be streamed from disk. Games also require to play back individual channels, such as position, rotation, and scale, for things like inverse kinematics to work. And finally, not every dev team has the budget to hire a 3D animator. So a game engine should be compatible with as many file types as possible so that any file you download from online should work in the engine. And so to meet some of these requirements, the new animation system does away with single transform tracks and now separates position, rotation, and scale onto their own track. Godot used to store animations uncompressed 
which could take up a huge amount of disk space and memory, especially for highly detailed animations like motion capture. To solve this, Godot 4.0 will come with a new bit width compression implementation that results in 5 to 10 times smaller file size. You can now also change the rotation edit mode to Euler, Quaternion, and Basis, as well as define the rotation order of the X, Y, and Z axis. Advanced conditions are now possible as well with the introduction of expression. They require a base node to work with and a valid logic that uses properties exposed by that node. Godot 4.0 is also coming with improvements to both shaders and the visual shader system. Godot 4 will finally come with the long-awaited feature of uniform arrays. This will enable the user to pass an array into the shader. Structs are now possible, which means many GLSL shaders can easily be imported from websites like ShaderToy with minimal changes. Visual shaders have been restructured such that operations like creating new nodes will simply add that node instead of rebuilding the entire graph. This should give a huge performance boost on large graphs or older computers. And a new context menu can be brought up by right-clicking while nodes are selected. Plus, there's a ton of new visual shader nodes being added. There's a uniform ref node, texture 3D node, curved texture node, comment node, billboard node, UV funk node, and SDF node. And shader particles have also been updated. You can define the velocity of particles you can define the emitter shape, and particles can now collide with GPU particles collision node. There's actually quite a lot more changes in regards to shaders, so if you'd like to read more, I will link the full article in the description. Gridless DB is a powerful and intuitive tool made with the Godot engine. Stop using spreadsheets to create your game data. Instead, Gridless DB features a drag and drop interface to design, edit, and visualize content for your games, like items, quests, characters, and more. User Ed Beeching has developed a library that allows video game creators, AI researchers, and hobbyists the opportunity to learn complex behaviors for their non-player characters or agents. OBS WebSocket GD is an add-on that allows Godot to interact with OBS WebSocket. Emojis for Godot adds an emoji icon and emoji button node to Godot. Godot Awesome Splash is a collection of splash screens for the Godot engine. Heavy Paint is a painting application made in the Godot engine. XSM Extended State Machine is a freely inspired implementation of state charts, complex state machines for Godot. This plugin provides states, composition with substates, regions, history, and helper functions in the easy-to-use nodes that I move around philosophy of Godot. Clyde Dialog is an importer and interpreter for Clyde Dialog language, completely written in GDScript with no external dependencies. File Editor Integration is a little plugin to manage your text files inside your project folder. Godot Plugin Particles Renderer allows you to create sprite sheets from particles. Sleepy Blocks is a block moving puzzler and winner of the 2021 GTMK Game Jam. The full version has 50 levels with different block types interacting and creating unique puzzles. Sheep It Alive is a pixel art casual game where you have semi-control of your sheep. Give it food and outsmart your enemies. You need to keep sheep alive as long as you can. The game is easy to learn and hard to master. Unstable Luggage is an action-packed physics Tetris-like game where you place luggage of different weights on a balancing log. Dash Pong is a fun and modern take on a classic. It's a high energy, chaotic, arcade local multiplayer game. You create physics based paddles by dashing. Score goals by sending your paddles at full speed. Enjoy the game up to four players in local multiplayer or with Steam Remote Play together. Magnet Mechs is a light hearted mech simulation where you must carefully maneuver your mech around levels in order to collect rescue pods and take them to safety. Rive is an upcoming boss-oriented hack-and-slash game. On the brink of your people's destruction, you are given the Hungering Axe, a forsaken weapon which once brought great destruction to the world. You must use it to pierce into the minds of your foes and drive them to insanity before consuming their powers for your own. Puzzle House is an escape room puzzle game.
of Blades and Tails is a turn-based RPG made with the Godot engine. Pixel Over is software to transform your arts to pixel arts as best as possible. Animate in real time with pixel perfect transformations, bones, and key animation system. Stomper is a short platform arcade game made in the Godot engine. Collect all gems to open the door to the next level. It looks like you have died, but neither heaven nor hell await you. Assigned a fate from the two creators, you will be sent back to life with the task of overthrowing the false gods. Exciting fights, difficult puzzles, and a colorful world of different creatures await you in Old God. Hypnagonia is a spire-like deck builder card game where you take the part of the dreamer captured in the nightmare realm and their reoccurring dreams and struggling to overcome their own issues to break out of this loop. Cat Box Paradox is a fast-paced, retro-platform game. You must think fast as you run, jump, and swap colors, making your way through eight floors of challenging and amusing color-changing mayhem. Non-Euclidean Chess provides a chess engine with boards and piece movement that push, bend, and sometimes defy reality. Play locally or online versus other players or AI. Super Liquid Soccer is a fast-paced, casual soccer-slash-football game made for desktop. Wander is a free-running arena game made with the Godot 4.0 Pre-Alpha. That's all for you this week. Like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm. Thanks for watching.